am a eighth grade math teacher at Sebastian Middle School in Breathitt County and I'm presenting on my STARS community problem solving project that we did and I actually coached two teams. I coached a team of sixth graders and a team of seventh and eighth graders so I had a junior and a middle team and they had two distinct projects but as we dug deeper into what was going on we realized that we could combine the projects together and still let them function as distinct projects but work together to kind of uh, build synergism and let the parts be greater than uh, or the whole be greater than the sum of the parts or, okay um, so our project for our junior team was called a healthier tomorrow and the middle grade team was called let them live so for a healthier tomorrow our junior team researched health issues that was impacting our county they developed educational materials and distributed them to the public. They measured and developed a 5K race slash bike route, and they painted school pride paws all along that route. Uh, they promoted and hosted a 5K run walk through a partnership with our local community health council. Now their original plan was to get bicycle lanes put in our county. And after uh, conversing with the highway department, we learned that there's just not enough shoulder for us to institute bicycle lanes in our county. They didn't have the space they needed to do such a thing. So we decided to kind of um, map out an exercise route around our campus and surrounding areas. Um, and we have also worked with a private company. They're actually going to pave some of the area of our 5K route that is actually grassed in. They're going to donate some pavement, and we're going to mark that as part of the trail as well. The middle team's project was called Let Them Live, and our local animal shelter had an abundance of animals that were in danger of being euthanized a few years ago. So they were all about helping this shelter minimize the risk of that happening again. So our original goal for that project was, hey, let's figure out how to convert our local animal shelter to a no-kill shelter where they, they don't euthanize animals. They find other means to transport or, or redistribute the animals. And we went on some research visits and found that, that it was too large of an undertaking for our team to take on. So what they decided to do is focus on promoting the importance of spaying and neutering to control the animal population to reduce the intake in the animal shelter. So fewer unwanted animals were going in, therefore they had fewer to find homes for, and in time hopefully will reduce you know, intake and they could manage the number of animals that they were adopting out. Um, uh, through our research, we found that places that had converted to no-kill shelters that heavily focused on a spaying and neutering initiative reduced their animal intake by a third within about six years. So they, they say that's very important. What my students did is they created radio advertisements, wrote newspaper articles, um, stressing the importance of controlling the animal population. Uh, we held some fundraisers at school to raise some money for um, free spaying and neutering for people living in our community, uh, for the, the pets of people living in our community, not the people living in our community. Um, they uh, partnered with our local animal shelter and they created an account that is exclusively earmarked for residents of our county where they can go in and if they have a pet that needs spayed or neutered, they, there's a voucher that the animal shelter already has. But the person coming in would have to pay 35 to $50, depending on whether it was a dog or a cat, to have their animal spayed or neutered. In this account, the funds that we raise go into this account, and that person coming in can get their animal spayed or neutered completely at no cost. Um, so, so I told you I can kind of work the projects together. The Junior Stars team charged a registration fee for the 5K event that they held and they donated all of the proceeds from their health awareness event to the um, animal shelter. Uh, the middle grade team volunteered to help paint the 5K track so they literally painted 500 paw prints by spray paint by hand with a template made of cardboard. It took about 60 hours for eight people to do. So they worked really hard getting that out. But it, there's a permanent exercise path around our campus where people can go. It's got a map outside the building that shows them how many laps they have to run to get their 5K in. Uh, it's really nice. Um, 
and our teams work together with our building principal to offer an incentive where all the white paw prints that were out on the track, students in our school could go out and customize them with different colors. They could put their names on it, decorate it however, so that they could kind of leave their mark on the path. And they charged a dollar a paw print and all those funds ended up going to the animal shelter. So we took the two projects and really kind of combined them together to, to achieve a common goal. Um, I've discussed this with you already that about we wanted to convert our local shelter to a no-kill shelter. Um, so I think we're good on that. Okay, so here's some photos of my students on a research visit to a very successful no-kill animal shelter and they really learned a lot on that trip. Uh, they transport a lot of their animals to other states that have um, basically more support going into animal relocation and animal welfare. Um, but a lot of them had never been in an animal shelter before. There they are, walking the animals and advertising our 5K around the school. Now this section is a grassy area between our elementary school and our middle school, and that's where we're getting pavement donated and the kids were measuring that out, and where I'm a math teacher, I made them calculate the volume of the uh, blacktop that would be needed and it's ordered in cubic um, yards so they had to figure out how much blacktop we would need to have donated. Uh, there's a couple of them painting the paw prints around the campus. And there are some students customizing the paw prints. We had a short week for spring break and we were afraid our attendance was going to be down so we offered that incentive to try to get kids to come in and not miss school to extend their vacation a little bit and we had pretty good attendance that day. Um, but as you can see it was a massive undertaking. We had about around 30, 30 runners. There's some of them kind of waiting at the finish line for our 5k event which is a pretty good number for our county. I'm from from Breathitt County and the city of Jackson, which is very, very small. Um, but they got quite a few people out to come and run and all of the proceeds uh, from that 5K were donated to the shelter. We also got the bank to donate run t-shirts. So those yellow shirts were donated by our local bank. And we had people of all ages participating. They got involved with the community and got the police to come and block off the path to make sure nobody got hit by a car, which we thought would be bad so um, and um, our final outcome for the let them live project we raised community awareness of the importance of spaying and neutering and neutering pets we raised a total of five hundred dollars so far for the animal shelter um, and we had a special account created just for people from our community at our shelter because the shelter that our animals go to is actually in another county because we don't have our own so we wanted to make sure that it benefited our community directly. So that account is earmarked just for people of Breathitt County to get no cost spaying and neutering um, for their animals. Um, for our Healthier Tomorrow project, students increased community awareness by creating posters and brochures. They m marked our permanent 5k route which will be there for years until the paint wears out and we actually bought extra paint so we can touch it up as we go since we painted that we every night i see people out working out on it at walking running riding their bikes around it so they really got um some people in the community out exercising they may have been exercising elsewhere but we got a nice safe place for them to walk and run and do whatever they feel like doing um they interacted and spoke with people at our bank and convinced them to purchase t-shirts, um, helped improve school attendance, which increases our funding, which means we have more to spend on other things. Um, and then, as I said earlier, they're actually going to leave a permanent paved walkway between our schools. So not only can people exercise on that as part of the 5K route, but students who have parents or family that work between the schools that just walk back and forth will not have to walk through that grassy area which holds water. It's so, a uh, little thing, but it's pretty neat. Anybody have any questions? Thank you all. <laughs>